Welcome to strength workout number one. We're going to go through a lot of basic exercises, but I'm going to show you level options. You can take this beginner level, level one, a little more intermediate, level two, or all the way up to level three. So we'll start our warm up. Feet wide, deep breath in. Do that again. And tap and reach. So I'm not going to have any music in the background. So after you've watched this through maybe once, or even while you're watching it the first time, you can have some music going on in the background. I want to make sure to teach you about why we're doing what we're doing and how to do it effectively and safely with a lot of options. So add a little torso twist here. Make sure that you're keeping your hips in line with your chest so that everything turns as you reach and warm up through the back. Go back to reaching up. As you straighten your leg here, I want you to start to add a little squeeze through the glute, warming up the glute and the low back. Back to shoulder height and twist. Four, three, hamstring kicks. So kick your feet back towards your glutes. Warming up the hamstrings, the quads, and getting that heart rate elevated. So moving through a warm up, dynamic stretches are the most important way to warm up before any exercise, especially strength training. So you never want to just grab a muscle and start to stretch it when it's cold. We want to do dynamic stretches, which is this moving through the quad, moving the leg to, strength, to stretch out that muscle and warm it up. All right, so plant your feet wide. Sit down in a squat, bring the arms forward. Stand back up. So butt should be going back and down. If you look down, you should be able to see your entire foot. Your knees should not be bowing in so you can't see your feet. Push it out, stand up, sit down and back, and stand up. So if your squat level, beginner level, is to here, in order to keep those knees back in line over the ankles, that's fine. Only go deeper when you can maintain those knees staying back over the ankles. Here's four, three, two, one. Bring the feet in, deep breath in, hold at the waist. Hang for just a moment, make sure your knees are not locked. You can even start to kind of shake those legs out a little bit here. Reverse that, bring the arms out, stand up. Arms at your side. Again, deep breath in. Hold at the waist. Shake those knees out. Now really bend your right knee, lifting your right heel, and switch. So level one, you may not be able to touch the floor and your hands can be on your thighs, and that's okay. Level two, hanging. Level three, reach down, get longer. Pedal those feet. Again, hands can be here on the thighs for beginner level one. Somewhere in between level two and all the way down level three. Four, three, two. Squat all the way down, crouch down, get those heels lifted. You'll feel the calves start to lengthen. So lengthen the legs. Sit back down. Level one, you're here. Level two, you're going a little bit deeper. Level three, keep those hands connected to the floor. Every time you straighten your legs, make sure that you are not locking your knees. So again, level one, you're up here. Keeping the head above the heart for level one. Here's four, three, two, one, modified jumping jacks. So level one, jumping jacks right here. Level two is a slow, steady jump. Level three, you're gonna explode a lot more on these. So level one, stay here. Level two, level three. Pick your level for 16 more. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I said 16, but I counted every other. So that's all we'll do there. Our first exercise for our strength workout is gonna be push-ups. So modified is gonna be on the knees. So let's start on modified push-ups. Hands are wide so that in your down position, your elbow, in your down position, your elbow should be directly over your wrist. So hands nice and wide. So get into position on your knees, pull your feet in, and you'll notice that when you do that, you'll go off of your kneecaps. And you'll pull, as you pull your feet in, your kneecaps are no longer taking the brunt of your weight. Keep your chin lifted. Now for intermediate or advanced, Intermediate, you're going to go to one knee down and one foot extended. For advanced, you're going to go to both feet extended. Pick your level. 16 push-ups. Here we go. So if you cannot get through 16 push-ups, you're just starting out beginner level, that's okay. You want to make sure to do what you can do. Consecutive push-ups. Do not take a break in between. Keep your chin lifted. Breathe through it. Keep those hips down. And go at your own pace. This should be 16. Sit back quickly. Take a break. And get your mat out of the way. We're moving on to lunges. So we're going to come back to push-ups again. We're going to do two exercises and rotate between those two exercises for two sets. Lunges. If you want a chair near you, for some stability, grab a chair, a bar stool, a countertop, whatever you have nearby. For our beginners, no weights. Use body resistance only. Intermediate to advanced, you're gonna pick your level of weight that you want. If you're intermediate or advanced, you should know what level weight you're at. You should be tracking your weights every time you do your workout. So I would start light. If it's the first time you're adding weights to a lunge, then I would start with light dumbbells. Right foot in front, left foot behind. Stand tall, shoulders back, chest open. Here we go, take it down. So on your lunge, you wanna make sure that your front knee is staying right over that ankle. The back knee bends underneath you. And both knees at the bottom of the lunge, which is right here, should be at 90 degrees. Now go at your own pace, listen to your body. You want consecutive reps. So try not to take a break in your reps. If you're following me, this should be 16. Stand tall, shake that out. Now whatever you did on one side, you have to do on the other. So if you say, well, but my left leg is stronger than my right, I can do more on this side. Don't do more until you can balance out the strength on both sides. So get into position on this side. Make sure you're not trying to stand on a balance beam. Keep your feet a little bit wider, more like on, trail, on uh, railroad tracks. Shoulders back, chin lifted, stay tall. And sink down. Make sure that those knees are at 90 degrees at the bottom. And that front knee stays back over that ankle. So as I look down at my front foot, I should be able to see that my knee is tracking in line with the center of that foot. But I can see my toes. Even at the bottom of my lunge, I can still see my toes. So we don't want the knee coming forward like that. Keep it back. And breathe. I think this is 12 for me. 13. 14, 15, and 16. Now every time you go to set your weights down, if you were using weights, make sure you squat down and safely set those weights down. Don't be tempted to just go like this. It's really bad on your low back to do that. So we are back at push-ups. Pick your level. I'm sticking with knees today. 
My low back is a little bit sore, so I'm not going to push it and go on my toes. I might try intermediate level, one knee down and one leg extended. But pick your level. Hands nice and wide. Pull those feet in if you're on your knees. I'm going to give this a shot, a little intermediate level. One leg extended, one knee down. All right, go at your own pace, 16 of them. And if you're doing what I'm doing with one knee down, at halfway, we're going to switch that. And you got to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to switch quickly, keep my hips down, and finish off eight more. Make sure you're breathing. And eight. Get back quickly. Get your breath. We're going back to lunges. So on um, those lunges, again, no weight is going to be beginner level. No weights. Maybe one dumbbell. If you're starting to add weight into your regimen, dumbbells into it, like instead of just body resistance, maybe just use one dumbbell and hold one and use the other arm for stability on a chair or a countertop. Otherwise, squat down and pick up your weights. Get into lunge position. Tall, shoulders back, chin lifted. And here we go, drop down. One, two, three. Check all those alignment things again. Make sure the shoulders stay over the hips. Make sure that knee is staying back over the ankle, halfway there. Twelve. Get deep, even as you're starting to fatigue. Good, step together. Shake that out. Almost finished with lunges. Make sure you're not trying to stand on a balance beam. Keep your feet shoulder width apart. Chest open, chin lifted, shoulders back, and drop down. Here we go. Lots to think about with alignment. Think of that back knee is the one that's guiding down toward the floor. That's going to help you keep those shoulders over the hips and avoid this. You do not want to be bending at the waist on these. Stay tall. Keep the weight in the heel of your front foot. I lost track. I think I'm at 11. Hopefully you're counting at yours at home. One more. Ah, good. Set that down. Now, if you want to do a third set of this, just pause it. Go back and do another set of push-ups and one more set of lunges. And you only want to move on to three sets if you're trying to increase your strength or you're trying to determine if you're ready to move on to the next level. So if you're beginner level and those first two rounds felt really easy with body resistance, do a third set and see how that third set feels. You want to feel like you have worked hard at the end of your second set. And if you haven't, if your heart rate didn't increase, if you're not breaking a sweat, you need to go do a third set. If it's still easy, then you need to be adding some extra resistance like dumbbells to it. Okay, our next two exercises. I'm going to grab the mat. Or if you're on carpet, that's fine. I'm going down on the ground for crisscross. Also known as the bicycle. So level one, you're going to keep your head rested on the ground the entire time. Level two, you're going to pick that up. At any time, if you feel you need to set your head down, go ahead. You want to keep a fist distance between your chin and chest the whole time. Just start out, we're going to bring those knees in. Again, you can keep your head rested if you want to, but I encourage you to try to keep it up as long as you can to gain some strength here. Level one, legs are going to stay really high. So I'm going to rotate my opposite shoulder toward the opposite knee, and then switch. Level one, legs are high. Level two, legs go lower. That's two and two. Level three, they go really low. That's three and three. Four, 
and four, five, and five, six, and six, seven, and seven, eight, and eight. How many should you do? Well, you should do as many as you consecutively can do, which means absolutely no pause and no break. If you feel you need a break or a pause, then you are reaching fatigue and that's your number. You want to strive toward higher numbers to increase strength and endurance, to maximize toning of the muscles. I lost count, but I'm guessing we're around 20 on each side, around there. Again, go to fatigue. Let those legs go out long, deep breath in. If you got to fatigue, you should have felt very, very warm through your entire abdomen. And as we stretched, you should have felt a release of that warmth. That's that lactic acid releasing out of those muscles. Pull your knees in and round up. Our second exercise in this block is going to be a bent over row. So with your dumbbells, um, you're going to want, for beginners, you're going to want really light weights, like threes or fives. To start out, if you've never done, if you haven't done weights in a really long time, you're going to want to start out really, really light. For those of you that want to go a little bit heavier, intermediate, or advanced, grab your weight. And I really recommend that you have a sheet of paper that you are tracking the weights that you're using for each exercise. So you would write down lunges, either zero weight or whatever weight you used in lunges. Now for our bent over row, write down bent over row and whatever weight you choose. On a bent over row, feet are shoulder width apart and you sit back and down. Do not let those knees come forward. So if I look down and I cannot see my feet, my knees are too far forward. So try that over again, make sure you can see your feet. Make sure your knees are lining up to track in line with your middle toe, right in the middle of your feet. Shoulders are back, chest is open, chin is lifted. But try not to let your tailbone be up high in the sky. Take your pelvis and tuck it under. And you do that by zipping up your abdominals. Elbows graze the rib cage as we come in and squeeze the scapula, the shoulder blades together. Keep your chin lifted, release. Squeeze and release. Now level one, you're gonna stay high in this chair isometric stance or chair squat. Level two, you're gonna come a little bit deeper into that squat as you do your rows. Level three, you're gonna drop down and come up a little on every single row. Breathing, keep the abdominals zipped up, keep the chin lifted. We're shooting for 16 reps. Make sure you're counting your reps because as I'm talking, it's hard for me to count them at the same time. I believe I'm approaching 16. I'll do one more to make sure. Now squat down to set those weights down. Nice job. So write down the weight that you used. If you used three pounds, write it down. If that was too easy for you at three pounds, then Make a little arrow on your paper next to three pounds telling you that you need to go up the next time you do that. So we're back down here for our crisscross. Lie back, head can rest the entire time where you're adding an upper body torso rotation with the head down, or you're gonna keep it lifted as long as you can. Legs higher for beginner, intermediate, more advanced. Here we go, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Now how low should your legs go? You should only take them as low as you can and still keep your low back flat on the ground. That's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Pull the knees in. Let the legs out long, arms overhead. Breathe in. Pull your knees in and round up. We're going back to our bent over row. So grab those same dumbbells you used or if you felt that you had 
too easy of a weight on that first set. Grab something a little bit heavier. Feet shoulder width apart, knees stay back. Sit back and down. Make sure you can see the majority of your foot in front of your knee in your lowest part of this stance here. Deep breath in, shoulders back, pull in your abdominals. That should create a low back tuck, so watch my low back. Here's unzipped abs, here's zipped abs. Just a little pelvic tip, tilt. Elbows graze the rib cage, here we go. One, two, remember, level one, you're gonna stay a little bit taller in this chair pose. Level two, you're gonna get a little bit deeper in the chair pose. That's eight. Level three, you're gonna add a big squat to this. Keep the weight in the heels. And I think that was 16. Sit down to set your weights down. Nice work. So block number two is done. Grab a drink of water. Our block three has an abductor press, so abductor outside of the leg, and then the second one is bicep curls. So to do the abductor press, you do not need any equipment at all. You can stand with your feet shoulder width apart, hands on your hips, zip up your abs, we're gonna press out to the side. If you want a little bit harder, then you're gonna take a loop band, if you have one, and obviously pick your level of resistance that you want, either light, medium, heavy, whatever you have for your bands. If you're using the band, you're gonna put it on the meaty part of your calf. You never wanna put a band too close to a joint, so you never want it too close to your ankles, and you never want it too close to your knees. So never, ever, ever lock your knees in anything we do. So you're standing in a slight squat stance but making sure your shoulders are over your hips. So this squat stance is just slightly bent knees. Do not lean forward. Stay tall. Zip. Hands can be here, and we press to the side. So depending on the resistance of your band, or no band, your leg is either going to go really, really far, or that band is going to restrict it from going very far. Stay tall. Keep this supporting knee bent. Here's eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Keep going. That was 16. Let's do four more. Three, two, one. That was 20 reps. Now, if you were not using any resistance and that felt really, really easy, if you don't have loop bands, they're about $5 on Amazon. I really recommend you get a set. Other side, stand tall, zip. Here we go. One. Two, keep that knee soft. Four, five, six, stay zipped. Seven, eight, nine, ten. If you want to add more cardio to this, 13, 14, add the arms. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. All right. Actually, you don't have to get rid of that band. Uh, no, you do, because we're going into biceps in a wide stance. So, Bicep curls. Beginners, if you haven't used weights in a long time, I want you to use something really light, like threes. Then evaluate how sore you are the next day or two after this workout to decide if you want to go heavier. It's always better to err on the side of lighter the first time you do this. Keep your notes so you know what you should increase or not. So grab your weights for bicep curls. We're going into a wide stance. Really, really wide. How wide? Well, you want your feet so wide that when you're bent, your knee is directly over the ankle, toes are turned out, and your knees, if you drew a line, are again tracking right over the middle of that foot. When I look at my feet, I can see from the tip of my shoelaces all the way to the end. So you want to make sure you can see that. If you can't, then you need to um, narrow up your stance a little bit and stand a little bit taller. So level one, you're gonna stand taller, knees slightly bent. Level two, level three. 
bicep curls. Here we go. Bring it up and release all the way. Bring it up, release all the way. So all the way means that you're straightening your arm, but you're not locking the elbow at the bottom. Six, seven, eight, nine. Now if you chose a weight that was a little too challenging, 11, you can go like this. You can alternate 12 and 12. So you keep track of your own reps, right? So you end up with 16 on each arm if you're alternating. And that should be 16. I'll do one more, there we go. So bicep curls, done. Set those weights down, grab your loop band again. Going back to that abductor press. So get that band on, stand really, really tall. Feet start shoulder width apart. So you wanna start where you still have a little bit of resistance on that band. It's a really good idea to be watching yourself in a mirror. So I'm watching myself in the mirrors across to make sure that my knees are not bowing in. That is not a good alignment with the knees and the ankles. So you wanna force those knees open, press against that resistance. Whether you have a band on or not, look and make sure that you have good alignment from the knees all the way down through those ankles. And push them out if you have to. You wanna train your muscles to get in good alignment. And if you don't have good alignment right now, then you wanna train them to get in good alignment so that it becomes natural. Stay tall, shoulders back, chin lifted. Pressing one leg out to the side, here we go. One, two, add your arms if you want more cardio. Four, five, six, seven. I can add little squats to this also for level two and three. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. No stopping, switch sides, here we go. One, two, three, Four, five, six. Watch those knees, make sure they stay over the ankles. Don't let them pull in. Nine, 10, 11. Stay tall, try not to lean. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Whew. Goodbye, Dan, for now. Okay, grab your weights for your last set of bicep curls. Squat down and pick them up, protecting your back. Feet wide, palms in front of your thighs, shoulders back, zip up your abs. Remember, level one, you're staying taller, but not locking those knees. Level two, a little bit deeper. Level three, really deep. Here we go, curl up, release. Two, three, Four. So your hands should come right in line with the shoulders. They're not out here. They're right in front of the shoulders. Keep breathing. Here's nine. Ten. Try not to rock your body. Eleven. Twelve. If they're starting to get tough, you alternate. Thirteen and thirteen. Otherwise, keep them both going at the same time. Get to sixteen. And one more. I think I lost count. Plus, I like to get to fatigue. The very last rep in your set should be challenging. That's how you know you have the correct weight for that exercise. It should be challenging to complete all those reps. Okay, set those weights down. Going into a squat or a lunge to set them down. Block three, complete. Block four. We're moving on to tricep kickbacks. So the back of the arms. And then we're gonna do a bridge press to work our hamstrings, our glutes, and our low back. So whatever weights you just used for biceps, you're gonna use those for triceps. But Laura, my triceps aren't as strong as my biceps. I know they might not be, but you wanna strive to have equal strength in the front and the back of your arm. That helps you keep um, that balance, if we have an imbalance in one muscle over the other, it can cause imbalances in all the surrounding joints and muscles. So we want balance, so grab the same weights, work with me. In a narrow stance, similar to that narrow stance we did in our bent over row. Make sure to watch yourself that your knees aren't bowing in. Keep
keep them out, feet shoulder width apart, bend at the waist, slight bend in the knees, and then way over. Push the chest out so that your chest and chin are lifted. Tuck your abs so that you lose that tailbone in the sky and your abs are pulled in tight. Your starting position is elbows in like chicken wings or cricket. So the elbows are back, they're not out here, they're in. We extend both arms straight back for one, two. Now, if you start to fatigue on this, you're gonna alternate just like I showed you in biceps. <sighs> Breathe through it, keep those elbows lifted. Keep that chin lifted, keep the abs tight. Here's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. If you need to alternate, alternate. Just count them so you end up with 16. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to 20. That was mean, wasn't it? <laughs> I'm at 17, 18, 19. Oh, this is challenging. 20. Why did we do 20 of those and we did 16 biceps? Well, we did because your triceps are a larger muscle group than your biceps. So you want to either do a little bit heavier or a few extra reps. So I choose to do a few extra reps. Now we're going down on the mat for our bridge press. You have the option of using no equipment for this. You don't need anything. If you want to make this a little bit harder, you're going to bring with you a band. You're going to put that band above your knees. You don't have to use um, equipment on this at all. And hardest level is at a dumbbell on your waist. So I'm going to show you level one, you would not have a band on. Your heels are digging, your feet are shoulder width apart. So if you look down, you should not be able to see your feet. If you can see your feet, bring them in. You're going to lift up through your hips, squeezing through your glutes, lift your toes so your heels are in the ground. Level one, your hands are at your sides. You don't have a band for level one. Level two, you have a band. Level three, you're gonna take a dumbbell, whatever size you wanna start with, because again, you're gonna track stuff and you're gonna write it down and you're gonna make a note if you need to go heavier next time. So right here, dumbbell, you're gonna hold it on your hips. If you can keep your arms not connected to the ground, you're gonna work on more stabilizers. If you need to connect your elbows to the ground for stabilization, that's okay. Drop your hips down to almost touch the ground and then push and squeeze back up. What are you squeezing? You're squeezing your glutes, your hamstrings, and pressing your heels into the ground. So release, press up, that's two. Release, and press for three. Release, four. Down, five. You're barely tapping the ground. You don't want to rest in between. Six, seven, eight. Remember, beginners, hands are on the ground, no weight. 10, 11, 12, you should be feeling a burn in the back side. 14, 15, 16, going to 20. 17, 18, 19, 20. So if you had a band on, you wanna make sure that you weren't letting your legs touch from the band pulling them together. You wanna to work against that resistance to keep your knees out and shoulder width apart the entire time. So we're gonna lose that band. If you had it, roll on up. And we're coming up for another set of tricep kickbacks. So the same weights that you just used. The only way you would change these weights right now is if you were not able to get to at least 12 reps, it was too hard, then you're gonna to wanna to go a touch lighter. If you completed all 20 reps with ease, then you wanna go a touch heavier. Two pounding increment is the best increase as you're trying to determine um, your level of resistance to hit fatigue. So knees soft, bend at the waist, pull those elbows in tight, chin lifted, and press back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, that's fine. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Take a break. We're gonna finish off this bridge press, and then we'll go into our next block. So if you had a band, put your band back over above your knees. Oh, see, this is me, real life. It's just, 
it is what it is. It's either dogs barking or kids interrupting every recording, but that's just me, real life. It is what it is. If my clients are here, I'm just about finished. You can come down, but um, do not to speak or get in the mirror view because I am recording. All right, toes lifted, heels digging in, elbows at the side, level one, no band or dumbbell. Level two, one or the other, level three, both. Release down, press up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Squeezing at the top, digging the heels in, twelve, thirteen, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Four more if you can. 22, 23, 24. Good, take a break, roll up. That block is complete. Okay, our fifth block is squats followed by standing oblique work. So grab your weights for squats. You typically want to go a little bit heavier with weight than you used with arms or upper body. But again, if you're a beginner, stick with no weights on this because body resistance will be enough. Squat down and pick up your weights if you're using weights. Feet are shoulder width apart. You want to watch in your mirror to make sure that your knees are directly over your ankles. Shoulders back, chest lifted. Sit down and back. And when you come to the top, squeeze your glutes, press your thighs together. Sit down and back, up and squeeze. Every time you sit down and you look down, you should be able to see the majority of your foot. Do not let those knees go out over the ankles or out over the toes. They need to stay over the ankles and stay back. So don't let them go forward from the ankles. Up and squeeze. Up and squeeze. Here's eight. We're going to 16 if you can. Nine. 10, so how low should you go? You should go as low as you can go. Here's 12, and you get lower and lower as you get better and stronger at this. 13, 14, 15, and 16. So something important about that squat is that you make sure that your knees are not wobbling and that they stay back. As you sit down, it's like you're hovering over a toilet. It's not this. Don't let those knees go forward. I can't see my feet at all. Sit back and down into that squat. Picking up heavy weights for oblique work. Again, beginners, stick with something light for today. If you're ready to move on to a little bit more of a challenge, intermediate and advanced, you're gonna pick up some heavy weight. Standing oblique, so I want your feet super close together. Knees are soft. Zip up your abs, shoulders back, chest lifted, drop to one side, come back up to the center. Stay to the same side for all reps. Here's three, four. So we're working the opposite side, the side that's pulling me up right there. There's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you're halfway. You should start to feel it. So I'm dipping to my right and I feel it on my left side. Keep going, breathe, stay tall. It's like your body is against a wall and you're like a windshield washer, windshield wiper blade, whatever they're called. That's just moving side to side. And as you approach 24 reps, which I think I just passed 24. You're not feeling a burn over on this side. You either need to go deeper or you need to increase the weight that you're holding in your hands. We are right away going to the other side. Stand tall, shoulders back. Dip down, come to center. Two, three, four, five. So I'm coming back across the center line a little bit. Seven. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, halfway, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, four more, three, two. Now without sitting down your weights, let's go right into squats. Sit down, uh, widen up your feet a tiny bit. Sit down and back, up and squeeze. Two, three, four, five. Remember, sit down and back. Six, keep those knees stable. Seven, you should be watching yourself in a mirror. Eight, watching those knees stay stable over the ankles. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Squeeze your glutes at the top. 15, and 16. Standing obliques. Now, I'm not doing much of a rest in between here. So if you need a break, go ahead and take one. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Dip way down. Fifteen. Stay tall. Seventeen. Zip up your abs. Protect your low back. 24 more. Keep the knees soft. Without breaking. Okay, a little break. Tiny break, other side. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, halfway, 14, 15, 16. So the weight you choose for every single one of these exercises matters. It either makes that exercise challenging, really challenging, or if you're not using enough resistance, it's too easy. So you've got to pick a weight. Make sure you squat down to set your weights down. You've got to pick a weight that makes that challenging. You should feel that working on every single one. Now, you may not feel it in the first half of the reps, but as you get halfway through your reps, you should be feeling it. If you're not feeling it, check to make sure your knees are together. Make sure your knees are soft. Make sure you're dipping far enough because the further you go, the more the side oblique has to work to pull you back up and over and make sure that you have heavy enough resistance on that. So our last final two exercises are down on the mat to work our core. Our core involves not only the abs, the rectus abdominis, the transverse, the obliques, but our core also involves our low back, glutes, and hamstrings. So really important to work both sides. So we're gonna start face up, Hands under your hips. Again, you're going to keep your chin lifted if you can. Whenever you need to set it down, set it down. But try not to over tuck. You want a fist distance between your chin and chest and you don't want this moving. Legs start up. Level one, you're up here. Level two, you're going to widen that. Level three, super wide and big. So your goal is to get to 24 of this. If you can get to 16, awesome, especially beginners. 16 is a great start. If you can't get to 16, then you need to stay higher so that you can get to 16. So pick your level. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure you're breathing. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Break if you need to. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Flip over onto your stomach, please. Arms out in front of you. 
So we are doing alternating diagonal raises. So right arm, left leg, switch. Left arm, left leg, switch. Two, and three, and three, and four, and four, and five, and five. Keep your chin lifted. And six, seven, looking out at the floor in front of you. Eight, and eight, nine, and nine, 10, and 10, 11. Keep your leg nice and straight. Do not bend at the knees. Here's 15 and 16. Now, if you want to go past 16 and go all the way to 24, go for it. Here we go. Flipping back over. We have to do each of those one more time and then stretch. Lying back, hands under the hips. Push your belly button down into the ground. Engage your abdominals, especially the deep, deep abdominals, the transverse. Lift your head, pick your level. Up here for level one, wider for level two, wider for level three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Breathe. I breathe loudly so that you remember to breathe. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Oh, it's getting harder. 22, 23, 24. Pull your knees in and flip over. Now, if you don't like the lying down one diagonal, you can do this on all fours. And I'll show it this way this time. Otherwise, you can lay down flat on your stomach again. So here's the alternative. Right arm, left leg. Left arm, right leg. That's one and one. Two and two. Keep your belly button pulled into your spine. And three, four, and four, five, and five. So you shouldn't have a sag right here. This should be flat. And six, seven, and seven. Try not to lock your elbows for the supporting arm. Eight, nine, nine, ten, ten, eleven. Keep your chin lifted. Try not to let your head hang. 13, 13, 14, 14, 15, 15, 16, 16. Sit back on your heels. Let your forehead connect to the mat. Nice job today. Take one arm under. So threading the needle in child's pose. Deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth, switch. So please do not turn this off and skip stretching, please. Stretching is so important after your workout, whether it's a cardio workout or a strength workout, but it's even critical, more critical after strength. Sit down, pull your leg back and get a good quad stretch. So you can rest this leg on the ground and get a good quad stretch. You can pull it way back and you'll get more into the hip flexor at the same time. But let's focus on the quad. So keeping that knee in extension right off of your body in a nice straight line, get a good quad stretch. Come into a hurdle stretch and lean as far as you can. Try not to yank your toes. Um, you don't ever wanna grab and yank your toes back when you're stretching because if you do this, you're actually pulling on that Achilles tendon. I want you to reach somewhere on your leg that you can pull yourself into a deeper stretch here. And if you can reach around the bottom of your foot to get deeper, that's awesome. Pay attention to where you are today. So if your hand is here and you can't get any further today, that's okay. Come up, try and get a little deeper, and see where that is. In a week or two, you should see that you're getting a little bit further and further each week. Your goal is that you want to be able to at least touch um, your fingertips to the bottom of your foot here. So that's your goal. That is um, kind of the minimum for healthy flexibility through your hamstring and low back. And then we're going to switch. We're going to hurdle stretch on this side. Again, fine now. I'm definitely not as flexible on this side as I am on that side. But I'm working on it again too. Getting myself back in shape too. Not just the COVID 20 pound gain. 
I mean, people were calling it the COVID-15. Mine was a lot more than that. No, actually, mine was before that. Two years off, and uh, a little extra weight on you, but I'm getting it off, and I'm working it off with you guys, so thanks for joining me. So then lean over here and do your quad stretch on this side. Again, the further back you pull this, the more you're going to make it about your hip flexor. Let's make it about the quad. Make sure you're breathing deeply through your stretches. So these are just some basic stretches. If you want to go through um, other stretches that you know and love, um, especially some yoga stretches like going into pigeon, um, camel, like all those other stretches, go for it. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you some basics. Feet out in front of you to get a little bit more into your low back and hamstrings. You'll feel this differently than the hurdle stretch that we just did. Again, don't yank on your toes. Notice I'm putting my fingers around the bottom of my feet. You can kind of pedal your knees a little bit here and you'll notice that that'll help loosen up your low back and your hamstrings and allow you to get a little bit deeper. Breathe. I like doing a seated twisting stretch. So put one foot over and you're gonna put the opposite arm to the outside of that knee and really twist and look over your shoulder. So really twisting through your torso. So you're stretching here, the hip, and you're stretching your obliques through your torso on this one as well. And let's switch. And we're going to go into a butterfly stretch next. So butterfly, put your feet together and kind of lean forward. And as we do that, we're going to add a tricep stretch. So you're kind of flapping your legs like a butterfly. You feel that loosen up through your adductors, the inner thigh right here. And pull your arm back. Putting your hand in the middle of your back as you press this elbow back and you'll feel a stretch right here through the triceps. And switch. So the more you stretch and allow that oxygen, oxygenated blood to get back into those muscles after working them, the less sore you're going to be and the faster those muscles will repair. You want them to repair because it's during the repairing process that you're going to build that strength and that toning and the muscular endurance. All that happens in the repairing process. So make sure you're stretching to allow that oxygenated blood to get back in there. So let's bring those arms behind you. If you don't like being on your knees, you sure can stand all the way up and do this one standing. Stretching through the chest, chin lifted. We tend to have very, very tight chest muscles, both men and women. Tend to very much neglect stretching our chest. And then reverse that, bring the hands in front of you, drop your head, round out your back. And as I hold that stretch, I'm going to come up to standing. Put your hands on your thighs. Drop your belly, lift your chin. And then reverse that, round your belly, drop your head. And do that one more time. Chin up, drop your belly, tailbone in the sky. And then round and drop your head. As you rise up, give me a deep breath in. And exhale. Raise one hand up. Put it in the middle of your back and give yourself a pat on the back. Nice job. Thank you for joining me.